Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be taking a look at Ahoy, except pretend that New Horizons appears right under here. Um, Cause that's actually what we're looking at. Not, not just Ahoy. If you do not know what Ahoy is, I am not going to go into all of the details about how the game works because I actually already have. I'm going to go ahead and link right above a video that I made that basically goes over everything you need to know about Ahoy. And I even included some sea shanties at the end of the video. So if you want to hear me singing terribly over some pretty rough piano playing, go ahead and check out that video. Please do that before you check out this video, because this video is only only going to go over the new stuff to this game. But with that being said, this is a prototype copy of the expansion. So all of the components that you are going to be looking at, those are not going to be final. Now in the original game, the game kind of came with two militant factions and then two insurgent factions is what I kind of call them. So the two militant factions are playing a game of area control. There was a blue faction and a yellow faction. In the first one, it was the Bluefin Squadron and the Mollusk Union. Well, we've now got two expansion factions that are going to be taking over those spots or at least able to be swapped in and out. And then there was the smuggler class, which is kind of the insurgent faction. They're going to be increasing the wealth of the regions, which is going to help those control the control factions score more victory points. And in the original game of Ahoy, they actually worked the same. There was just two of them. So this expansion adds two brand new insurgent factions to be swapped in for smugglers. So you can do any combination that you want with this expansion for a total of four new factions to the game. That is what I have been waiting for for so long. So I am just so excited that we are going to kind of finally be able to kind of play around with the system some more and figure out some more cool, unique combinations. And once again, thank you so much, Leader Games, for sending the copy to me in order to show you guys the viewers. Now, first up, we have got the Orca faction, which is going to be called the Blackfish Brigade. Now, the Blackfish Brigade is the new militant faction able to be swapped with the Bluefish Squadron. So there are a few things that don't change between the two. The first is the fact that they score from the wealth in the regions that they control at the end of the round. The second is that they also have a fifth die, just like the Bluefin Squadron. And the third is the patrols. So yes, the Blackfish have patrols that work pretty much identically to their shark predecessors. Now they have veteran patrols as well, which act as a blend between patrol and bluefin strongholds. These powerhouses have a control value of two, and they can also dominate islands and are not affected by wreckage. Now there are many different limitations with how to get patrols onto the game board, which will lead us to the first major concept that makes the blackfish faction very unique, and that is called the whale pod. Now, this is what makes the Blackfish Brigade so cool, this wild tactical puzzle. The whale pod consists of two pieces, this pod piece that nests perfectly around wealth dice and a card that will sit near your player board. Now, you will fill up the pod as you take your actions in the game. When you play some dice, there will at times be a patrol or a veteran patrol symbol above the action. You can then add the shown patrol to one of the four quadrants of your pod card. Now, to get the patrols onto the game board, we must use the migrate action. This will allow you to move the whale pod up to the place die value to adjacent regions. And as you make each move, you can drop patrols in the same orientation as they are on the card. Now, to move your patrols, you can use the whale song action. This moves two patrols, two spaces each. This feels kind of like the Bluefish Squadron's order action, which moved four patrols once each. Now, how do we actually get rid of the comrades? Well, this is where the tactical nature of this expansion continues even more. While balancing where your pod is moving and dropping its patrols along the way, you'll also want to place those pods in areas that your flagship can use to remove comrade tokens. The surge action allows you to move your flagship in a straight line towards any patrol, and along the way, it will remove all the comrades on any island it passes. It's so powerful, but it's also limited by the board setup 
So the Blackfish Brigade is really going to be playing a puzzling game of getting out their patrols strategically, lining them up so that you can use your flagship to surge across the map, wiping out all of those comrades along the way. And it is a blast to really kind of look at the board in such a tactical way and uh, just kind of see the board differently than you've seen it before. Really, really enjoy what they were able to do with the Blackfish Squadron. But that leads us to the next faction. Then we have the new resistance faction that can swap out the Mollusk Union. Once again, there are some similarities here between the two, and first would be the comrades. They still must puzzle their way into getting comrade tokens ready on their player board and then get them onto the islands around the game board. Now the second thing is that they also have a deck of plan cards, powerful abilities that can be used at many opportunities during their turns or during battle. Now, besides the fact that those 12 cards are completely different than the Molluskians, there's actually a lot more that makes these turtles much different from the Mollusk Union. The range die would be probably the biggest thing. They have a range die, and this is rolled at the beginning of each round along with their other dice. But this dice actually determines your range for the round. Now, to understand why the range matters, we must look at these launchers. Now, you will have four launcher ships that can be placed on the board with a build action. And when placed, you are able to add any number of ready comrades under them. At the end of each and every round, you are able to shoot these comrades from your launchers and flagship. You can launch them up to your range in a straight line so long as they are placed on an island. Now your flagship will use comrades that are readied, while the launchers will use the comrades that are placed under them. Now your sail action is directly linked with how you get more comrades. When you sail and anchor at an island, you can gain three comrades, or instead, if you anchor by a launcher, you can actually add any number of ready comrades to that launcher. And this same effect actually works when you anchor after a tailwind. Now, to position your launchers for the end of your turn, you can use the aim action. This allows you to move two launchers up to the value of the die that you placed on the aim action. Readying your comrades, playing those plan cards, and really kind of planning out around your range die is kind of the whole strategy with this faction. And it is so much fun to be able to have a really good end of turn uh, pulled off by shooting these comrades onto the islands. It is so satisfying. It's one of the most satisfying things, honestly. I really, really love this new kind of rebellion faction. It works so well, and I love all of the creative design space. And the next up is probably my favorite of the bunch, but honestly, it's kind of hard to choose because I really do love all of these factions. Now the Coral Cat Pirates are an interesting puzzle to solve. They are trying to gain frigates, frigates that each have three jobs they are trying to complete for fame. Now the Coral Cat Pirates can recruit as normal when anchoring at an island. However, they have this other option called hiring. Now hiring is how they actually deploy these frigates in their supply. You choose a card matching the island's suit, gaining a little bit of fame depending on the cost of the card, and increase the wealth of the region. Now you will be placing this card covering everything but the art with the matching suit frigate card. So let's just say that you have the Spectre ship now. Your goal for this ship is to enlist a swashbuckler, barber, and cannoneer, each representing a different suit than the frigate itself. Now frigates can stop at islands and may enlist the crew of a matching suit to fulfill a job not complete. They don't pay the cost of the card and instead place it under the ship for end game scoring. But here is where it gets even more puzzling. Now there are six suits, which means six frigates, which means 18 potential jobs, and each frigate has three needs to score and a unique special ability. Oh, also, you cannot recruit crew if a matching frigate is already on the map. And they also have a relocate action that can swap the places of two frigates on the map. But if you are wanting to maneuver multiple ships, the parade action is honestly so great. This moves ships up to the die value placed and many of the frigates have either during or after parading effects that will activate. The last unique action is robbing. If the flagship is at an island, you can place any die to discard one crew card from the market and gain gold based on its recruit cost. A great way to earn some money and supply all of these frigates here.
Now, at game end, each frigate will score for filling a job only if all jobs to their left are filled on the card. So, for example, if I only had the server and chef filled on the banquet, I would gain zero fame for this card at the moment, but if I also had the cook enlisted, I would score seven for the card in total. Now, during the game, as frigates are battled, they actually keep the damage tokens they gain on their frigate cards, and the Coral Cap Pirates will lose one point for every damage token collected this way at the end of the game. It is just such a fun game to try and puzzle out all of these different ships that you have built that you are trying to get to different islands to collect all of their each individual jobs and like what order do you secure those jobs because you want to make sure you have them all from the left to actually score but also it's like sometimes it's just better to get the one that scores you the most fame first because it's closer. Now probably the most unique entry to Ahoy doesn't even sail at all. The Leviathan is made up of two types of pieces, bodies and heads. Now your whole goal is to spread as far as you can and gain fame of your massive size at the end of each round. You will be gaining fame for each body piece that you have on the map. Now the Leviathan manages three tracks while navigating the game. Speed, which determines their automatic movement of their heads at the start of each of their turns. This is also how they will actually be placing the collected body pieces from their board. Fangs, which will add its value to your roll when you attack in battle, and it will also determine how many body pieces you can gain when you actually win in a battle. And then Size, which will allow you to collect body pieces every single time you go up this track. Now, since this is a sea monster and not a ship, a lot of the basic actions actually had to be renamed. Slink is your sail and works the same, only you choose only one head to move. Dive is your tailwind, and strike is a battle action that can attack from a distance equal to the die placed and only targets one piece instead of attacking everything like most battles do. Now, the next couple actions are a little more interesting and unique. Devour is your way of dealing with comrades. You remove two adjacent comrades with one of your heads and get to move up one of your tracks. Grow allows you to spend gold to move up one of your growth tracks, and before I explain the last two actions, I have to explain the evolution cards. Now, this is a six card deck that will always have two on offer. Evolution cards have a couple of attributes, an interesting ability that you can gain, a suit, and a fame amount. Evolve is an action that allows you to remove a crew matching an adjacent island to one of your heads and tuck it under a revealed evolution card matching its suit. Now this evolution is now active and you have a brand new ability for the rest of the game. But if even one of those pesky evolutions is proving to be too difficult to gain, you can use the bide action to discard one and gain its fame value. Now one of the most intriguing things about the whole end of round scoring for the Leviathan is that it actually helps its opponents score more points. Now, they don't actually increase the wealth die. Instead, both the control factions, the blue and the yellow, they actually score an extra fame point if at least one piece of the Leviathan is in the region that they control and score for. And you want to hit the body parts at some point, even if it's gonna benefit you, because they're gonna score points for every body part, the Leviathan itself. So it is just such a fun faction to add to Ahoy. And so that is it. Those are the four new factions and a general idea of how they work and kind of what they bring to the table, how they change the game. Now, if you enjoy Ahoy, what is your current favorite faction in the game? And also, what is the faction that you are most looking forward to coming in this New Horizons expansion? I would love to chat with you down below, so definitely leave a comment. Now, if you're interested in reading about the game, definitely check the link down below in order to get information on how to support it and get it into your hands when it's a final product. But hey, if you like the work that I do here, if you like the B-roll, if you like the music, if you like what I have to say, I would really, really appreciate it if you would leave a like down on the video. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Mm -hmm.